Namaste. Welcome to Pankaja Ayurveda in the midst of the beautiful summer season. So good to see you after some time. And I wish to, to give some practical tips for the summer season from the Ayurvedic perspective, how to keep cool and fresh in this um, very, very uh, nourishing, very from, for, our, for our emotions, for our heart. We love the summer, for, but from our physical level, actually it can be sometimes a little depleting because there's so much heat and this heat brings dryness also. So it can dry out our substance. So vata and pitta increasing. So some care is needed to fully enjoy the summer season. So let's talk about that. I will start with Gajananam prayer. Om. Gajananam Bhuta Ganadhi Sevitam Kapita Jambu Palasara Pakshitam Umasutam Shoka Vinasha Karanam Namami Vigneshwara Pada Pankajam Hari Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Hari Om so this was my favorite prayer to Lord Ganesha Ganapati to remove all the obstacles which may be in our path for every one of us and for the world in this still very, very challenging time. So my prayers and my love and compassion is with everyone around the world and may the situation improve fast and um, sustainably. So may it stay good. That's what I try to express. So for some of us in some country, actually, it is um, there is a more freeing atmosphere right now. We can go out more so we can sit in the outdoor parks and have our picnic and even some places open. So with all the precautions, we can really enjoy this beautiful time of the year, especially for Vata people, Kapha people who are more on the cool side of their energy field. So they really need to, 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 to we, we call like Sonne tanken in German. So see, now I switch to more German in my mindset. So tanking, charging sun, charging this warmth, this, this, um, yeah, warmth is needed to grow and to transform. So after these long winters that we have in the in the European countries, we really we can see like how everyone switches faces and switches energies around this time of the year when they just can walk in sandals. So you might not imagine in some other parts of the of the world that this is a luxury for people in the cold countries to free their feet, their toes, so they can move and they can feel sunlight on their skin. Very beautiful, and very important also to, um, to build vitamin D in your skin. So that's why so many people with not enough sun, they have a vitamin D deficiency, including me, so I know well about it. Um, and also it's not the sun alone. There is, you know, many organs are participating to build this precious hormone, so like the skin and the, the liver. So if there is any issues on any uh, part of the, of the pathway, and um, so then even if we, when we are out in the sun a lot and still we're not building vitamin D. So sometimes it's also good to do blood work and to check these kind of things to make sure you're not um, overseeing, neglecting some, some issue which might um, influence you more than you think, your immune system and then your levels of energy. So those people often feel like extremely easily exhausted and not rested even after a good night's sleep. So then we, we really have to investigate where is the reasons, where is the reasons. And as I studied with Dr. Lad, Wasant Lad, my master, 
so he takes to, he he combines the the Ayurveda and the Western medicine. He studied both, and he is, expects from us, his students, to only also study at least some basics of Western medicine to be able to read a blood chart, to read a diagnosis of a Western doctor, and then to see how this um, how, how what, what picture this creates in Ayurvedic terminology and explain to the client, and then find a good. Um, solution, the proper and individual approach also. There is no clear solutions. Uh, it's very individual, very, very personal, and that's what also people so much appreciate. I see here now that I, what, the camera switched, but I think I'm still on. So in my, in my work, starting to work with um, clients in Austria, it's really fascinating for me. And the feedback is often that they feel so much heard so understood, so much seen, taking this much time. My initial consultations are one and a half hours, so that's really luxury of time um, to, to sit together and really dive deep, sometimes in the first meeting, into some very personal issues of that person and take time to take the pulse, to analyze the tongue, to analyze the face, and even if the client wishes, we do a very short introduction and in looking into the Vedic astrology, the Jyotish chart of the person. So that's often eye-opening experiences. And I remember these from, from my own first experiences with Ayurveda and with Jyotish and with Dr. Lad, my very first consultation. I was talking about that today for an interview, so it is very close to me right now. And he and then I described how he actually made me see and feel, realize my potential in that very first encounter I had with my master, with my future teacher, Ayurveda teacher. And that was 2010, so more than 10 years ago. And I did not understand much or any of the terminology, but my heart was touched. So that, and that's what he teaches and guides his students, how to enter into the heart of your client. So that's really, that's a chapter in his book. It sounds so romantic, so intimate, so beautiful. And, and it is all of that. And it is also a, a science, a technique. So you also, we also learn that. We watched our master so many times with a client. So there's so many memories and experiences I have on how Dr. Lahat reacted to our client and with how much love and grace and compassion and no judgment at all, no matter what the client brings up, to, to not judge it. And you cannot fake that, if you know what I mean. So the, the people, they, they feel that, they feel if you're authentic and if you really love what you do. And so I'm so grateful that I was able to study with this jewel of Ayurveda, Dr. Wassantla. So this is, uh, just came up in this summer lecture. <laughs> As you can see, I sit in a beautiful garden in the shade, even in Vienna, it has almost 30 degrees now in the shade. So that's really, that's very hot for us, for all Western Austrians, yeah. <laughs> and so I sit with a pitta tea, beautiful pitta tea, and I just learned a new recipe, which I want to share, especially for pittas, for everyone who feels hot right now. And you can soak, coriander, uh, the, the full grains, and raisins, dried raisins, organic quality, and soak both together in water overnight. And in the morning, and so before you soak it, you crush the coriander. Ta tana, I think. Something like that in Sanskrit. Sorry, I, I'm not sure right now. But it is uh, coriander. You crush it, and together with dried raisins, which you rinse, then you soak it overnight and in the morning you blend it and you drink this cooling drink maybe in the in the in the morning time or even later in the afternoon still don't drink it right out of the fridge don't put ice cubes in it i know it's tempting i know many people do it especially if you have any vata issue and most of us do like nervousness uh, irregular digestion gases, flatulence, um, worries, sleeping disorders, so joint pain also very typical, 
um, with Wata is one of the main hitters, the main reasons. So then really avoid the chilled, ice chilled drinks or ice cream, like very, very once in a while as a special treat. But don't make a big ice cream uh, your, your, your meal, even in the summertime, okay? And still sip um, hot water so you will let it cool it down a little more for the summertime, but still boil it. It changes the quality of the molecules in the water and those molecules then easier enter into your cells. So you, your cells get really hydrated and nourished if you boil the water before you drink it and let, let it cool down before you drink it, especially now in summer and especially now for pitta people. It can be, it can be even lukewarm when you drink it. Right? And if you have time to even boil it for 10, 15 minutes, then it really gets those precious Ayurvedic properties. We call it the champagne of Ayurveda, just boiled water, 10 to 15 minutes. It's easy, it's cheap, it's simple, and it cleans your whole uh, perception in your mouth, your taste buds. So sometimes in the beginning it doesn't taste so well, but that's, that's a sign which shows that you purify. And then with the time, the water will taste sweet, so sweet. You, you actually don't want to drink much different other beverages because it tastes so good with the time. It's like champagne, right? When I was at theater, there was a famous quote that I loved in a piece by Arthur Schnitzler. So that's a very Austrian, famous um, um, author. And uh, Fräulein Else, or Lady Else, I don't know in English, was the top, was the name of this play, and I was playing it. And it's a, it's a, it's a monologue, so only this woman tells her experiences. It's very, very, it was very interesting work. Um, and there is a line where she says, the air is like champagne. I remember that. Die Luft ist wie Champagner. That was one of my favorite lines. And that was just her perception of, you know where this play, where it where it plays this um, this piece of literature, it's actually close to Vienna in a very famous region in Austria, which is called the Semmering. So you can Google that Semmering. It is now one of those world famous locations of the world, protected world locations, um, because it is so beautiful and it has such a clear kind of crispy air atmosphere. And so this was put in this one sentence, the air is like champagne, because there is little mountains and hills, and there is small, small rivers, which such a clear, pure water, such a beautiful nature, and a lot of culture there. So you can go to theater, and you can see uh, houses where those famous authors lived in the 1900s or something. And so that's, um, yeah, that's what I think of when I think of uh, that the hot water is also regarded as champagne of liquids in Ayurveda. It's this preciousness, purity, and for me also it has a highly spiritual aspect, though champagne has some alcohol, but this, this quality of uplifting. So if this air is like champagne or your water is like champagne. And once in a while, why not? A real flute of champagne if you feel like it. So what was that about the summer? I'm in a very champagne mood today, it seems like. So I gave you the recipe for coriander raisin water. Very cooling, very refreshing and also nourishing the raisins. So they bring, you know, they bring this, um, they calm down cravings, sweet cravings, which you might have for chocolate. With chocolate is really in the summer, it, it clogs the channels even more. And I'm one of the chocolate addicts, so that's not easy for me to say. But once you stop it for a while, it gets out of your mind also. It's like with all the habits, you know. <clears throat> and if you have healthy sweet in your diet, then you need less of those cravings. So I want to give um, uh, another little uh, tip is, um, you know, watermelon. So this can be a really refreshing snack once in a while. And I say snack because it is not good, regarded in Ayurveda, to mix it with other food. Any, f any fruit, actually. Fruit it, to have like half an hour before your lunch, for example. Or for those who really can have fruit as a breakfast, like those also who want to lose weight, they can do that. Not someone with a high level of vata, I would not recommend. So then have it by themselves, the fruit. And also not mixing them too much. So they're very um, puristic. 
um, followers, they would even say just one sort of fruit at once, because they all have different rasa, virya, vipak, and then else would maybe confuse this body intelligence, which ends up producing ama. So watermelon, and especially for melon, Dr. Lad says, melon, eat it alone to create a poem, like he does with basically everything. So that's good to remember. So not this very fancy combination of melon and ham, for example, which many people love as a fancy appetizer. And um, so this is one of the not recommended food combinations. So just as a heads up, okay? And um, for pranayama, I want to give the cooling breath. I think we did it before here on YouTube, but now is that time. So shitali, the cooling breath, where you inhale through a roll of your tongue. And if you cannot create a, whole, uh, um, a roll of your tongue, it looks like this. Yeah, some people anatomically cannot do that. So then they can inhale through the corners of their mouth. That's then called shitkari pranayama. So it has a very, very similar and also cooling effect, right? So those who can't form a roll, they would inhale here. Here in the corners, creates a beautiful smile, I can just see, so that's good. It says also that this pranayama really makes you prettier. So if you're beauty concerned, then do this every day, okay? So, but those who can roll the tongue, you can inhale through the tongue, and then you take the tongue inside, and you close your mouth, and you, um, you position it, your tongue, on top of your palate. So you don't press it up there with a lot of force, you just put it there. And you will feel that the cooling that you created with this airflow, which is on your tongue, and then you put it on your palate, and you breathe out through your nose while you do that. And this cooling effect will go immediately through this I don't know the name now, and uh, you know the different levels uh, of, of, of the brain where the nose um, has has its um, continuation into the brain, Siebbein Platte in German, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyways, you're cooling your brain with that um, beautiful pranayama, especially if you also use this extra tip with putting your tongue on your palate. I will show it now and you can do seven repetitions and do them slowly. And in between, enjoy the gap, as Dr. Lad says. There is a gap of peace, of silence, of nothingness before the next inhale and also before the next exhale. So just see if you can dive into those two gaps between inhalation, exhalation, and between exhalation, inhalation. That's the most precious. We can talk more on that another day. So, and this is a beautiful exercise which you can do anywhere, basically. And also when it's very acute, something triggered you, you were on a phone call or whatever upsets you, or also food, you had, you had some spicy food or something, then you can just go to the washroom or somewhere and a few, you take a few steps in the garden and you do shitali or shitkari and then you come back and um, your red flashes or whatever might have flared up for pitta might be reduced. So I wish you a cool, beautiful, blissful summer. And now let's do some pranayamas together. You inhale, sit comfortably, relax your shoulders and your neck. And first preparative um, long exhale, maybe a sigh if it comes. And then inhale through the tongue. And Shitkari. Mm -hmm. 
And when you're finished, and just rest in this silence for one, two minutes at least. Just breathe normal. You can still keep your eyes closed. And feel this benefit, this cooling, refreshing prana in your body, traveling to every little cell nourishing and refreshing your whole system and then with a deep inhale moving your shoulders you come back you can do up to seven to start we did two each now and then you can come back into your day into the room or garden or wherever you are the people who surround you and continue your day and may you have a blessed day I want to end with Dr. Lat's healing prayer for the world. Please join in if you know it. And you can listen to his uh, YouTube recording called, I think, Wasn't Lat's Healing Prayer. There you also find the text and the perfect pronunciation. Namaste. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Sarve janah sukhino bhavantu Sarve santu niramaya Sarve Padrani Pashyantu Makaschi Dukkapak Pavit Om Shanti 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 Arihiyo